Today I'll be reviewing and recapping the final episode of the final season of Game of Thrones. And I'll also be drinking some ghost pepper tequila. So, stay tuned. Ah, fuck it. Hello everyone and welcome to the final edition of Review of Thrones. I'm your incredible host, Detective Artemis, and before we go on, make sure you hit that thumbs up button because I know it, you know it, Jamie's regrown hand knows it. You really want to like this, please? In this video, we'll be talking about spoilers, so if you haven't caught up with Game of Thrones yet, uh, I don't know what to say anymore, but make sure you hit that watch air button on this video, go watch the show, and then come back and join the discussion. Go! Or if you don't care about spoilers, sit back and let's talk. Well, we made it after all these years. We finally arrived at the end of the show. So, what happened? Tyrion goes to the bottom of the throne room where the ancient Targaryen dragons are, and he confirms the one thing that I didn't want to know. Jaime and Cersei Lannister, one of the biggest characters of the show, have been killed by some goddamn bricks. All right, so there goes those theories of them surviving. I guess that was just wishful thinking. He just died in her arms tonight? Lame. Daenerys is also rallying up the Unsullied to continue the liberation of Westeros, meaning that she wants to replicate last week's episode, but not just only the King's Landing now, she wants to do that shit everywhere, including Winterfell. It is cuckoo o'clock over there, apparently. Arya tells Jon that his aunt and girlfriend is fucking crazy, but he's like, fuck that, she's my fucking queen. Even Tyrion tells him like, dude, you gotta stop her before she commits another genocide, but he's like, Fuck that. She's my fucking queen. Jon Snow, you dumb loyal bastard. This was pretty much about a guy dating a girl who is clearly crazy but is in denial to see it, despite his friends telling him that, hey, this girl, this bitch, is fucking crazy. Now, I think we've all been there at one point. We then see Daenerys finally, I mean finally, make it to that goddamn Iron Throne, her great-grandfather's throne. This was the thing that she wanted the most, her complete drive from Essos to over here, to take back what belonged to her family. She even killed some kids for it, and was it worth it? Nope. Her extremely short reign of terror ends before it even begins. The lords and the ladies of the main houses get together and they sort of make a little mini democracy to select the next king or queen of the seven kingdoms. No more monarchy. Tyrion nominates Bran because basically he's got some cool stories bro. Plus no one could ever take away his throne because he takes that shit everywhere. They all agree and Bran is the new king. Yes, you heard right, Bran fucking Stark, Bran the Broken, is the new king of the Seven Kingdoms. After all these years of theorizing and guessing and hoping that one of our favorite characters would make it and win the Game of Thrones, no, 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 it was Bran Stark. <laughs> I bet no one really saw that coming, and if you did, you're a fucking liar. I mean, they really had to go with boring ass thousand yard stare Bran. That is fucking bullshit. And it wasn't because it's not what I wanted, but it was fucking anticlimactic. He, he, even he was like, yeah, I'll be king. This whole thing was weaker than his legs. He won the goddamn game. Bran nominates Tyrion to be his hand, and Tyrion's like, God damn it, man, I don't want to be the hand anymore. But the new king, Bran Stark, is like, this is the old punishment. You have to undo all the bad decisions you've done. And he's like, oh, well, fuck it. At least I get to live. So he starts a new council with Davos, Bronn, Sam and Brienne. Then they just go on about their day. That's it. Yeah. It sort of undoes all the emotional impact from the day before. Not even a single dude. Do you remember last night? Shit was crazy. Sansa became the Queen of the North when she decided Winterfell would be an independent. Jon Snow was sent to the Wall as punishment for killing Daenerys. Bringing his story into a full circle because he started over there and he ended over there. But now with the White Walkers defeated, there is really no point of a Night's Watch. So him, Tormund, and the other wildlings get together and they all leave to go beyond the wall because Jon is now the king of Beyond the Wall. But hey, at least he actually pet ghost this time. This was a callback to episode 4 when Tormund tells Jon, hey, you belong in the north. Foreshadow. Oh, and Arya becomes a fucking pirate. Now let's see who died in this episode. Daenerys Targaryen is finally dead in the lamest boss battle ever. Jon stabs her in the heart when they're kissing and talking about ruling the world together. He was just like, Fuck that, she's fucking crazy. You realized it a little too late, dude. You really did know nothing. And then Drogon gets her body and takes her away. We find out later that he's going east of King's Landing, which more than likely, he's going to Valeria, the home of the Targaryens. The Iron Throne is burned by Drogon in a fiery fit after he sees Danny dead. 
pretty fitting since the Iron Throne was forged by a dragon, and now it's been burned by a dragon. Full circle for that. I thought John was going to get burned, but Drogi pointed out the throne. Now, I wonder if he could have survived the fire. Well, we'll never fucking know now. Also, some remaining Lannister soldiers were executed by Grey Worm. If only the execution of this season was as good. Game of Thrones itself died when it fell victim to the shitty TV endings virus. Now, I'm not saying that this season should be remade. That's just fucking stupid. But to me, a story is defined by its ending, and this ending was pretty flat. Especially when you have all this character building and years of emotional investment. It's frustrating to go through all that with no real satisfying payoff. It's like watching WWE. I really tried to be optimistic about this season and there were some awesome moments but they were unfortunately outweighed by the negatives. The Night King was set up as the biggest boss of the entire show. All they were doing is just talking about him and how he's gonna come and kill him and it was just this whole build up to it. But he dies in one episode and goes out like a little bitch from behind. Daenerys dies in like the first 20 minutes of this episode and the rest was slow filler. It was like an Avengers Endgame where they killed Thanos us in the beginning and it's like where in the fuck do we go from here? Pretty much after that, I could not wait for this episode to end. And that's pretty sad. This should have been way better. The biggest problem of this season is that it's only six episodes. I know it was because of logistics and budgeting, but the show unfortunately suffered because it was rushed. If they were doing a full season, the Daenerys heel turn should have been right in the middle. We didn't even get a chance to actually feel her as the Mad Queen. It was just so quick. Probably like Jon Snow in bed. But don't worry, the showrunners are working on the Star Wars trilogy now. Hmm, I wonder because that, they're like, we got we got Star Wars thing to do. Fuck this show. I don't give a shit anymore. Conspiracy theory. People can try to justify the finale, but to say that you weren't disappointed at all is just delusional. Though the best thing to take from all this is that Podrick survived the show and became a goddamn knight. That's my king. However, we will never know what he did to those whores. I can only imagine, like I always do. Every day. Every hour. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, seriously. I wish I was joking. So what did you guys think of the ending of Game of Thrones? Let me know in the comments down below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this amazing channel. I am Detective Artemis, and now here's me drinking ghost pepper tequila because you deserve a good ending. Hey guys, we're playing Monopoly and uh, my boy Art here is a broke ass bitch and can't afford to pay his rent. So... After showing off how much he wins at Monopoly, so we have here a bottle of ghost pepper tequila. And instead of paying uh, one time's worth of rent, you're going to take a good old fashioned shot. Okay. Let's do this. Mm. Don't breathe. Yeah, breathe it all. All right, 10 seconds starts now. Counting. One, <laughs> two, two. <laughs> three. Five. Nothing. I can do this all day. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. What comes after nine? You know what? <laughs> Pour me another one, kid. Oh, Pour me another one. oh big <laughs> badass right here. What is this? Tap water? I love tap water, by the way. And <laughs> these ladies over here told him to give him a full shot, and they're like, no, he can't handle it. He's not bad. <laughs>